Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the Permian Basin International Oil Show. Spectacular. Here we're at the Wireline Podcast Party booth. I am Jason Spees with The Crude Life, and we've got Jason Arsenault with us with Nailed Arc it. Energy. How are you doing today, sir? Well, I'm good, Jason. How are you, Jason? You came all the way from Scott, Louisiana, huh? Uh, live in Houston these days, but I oh. still claim Louisiana, always. So what's going on in Houston these days? Have they got a football team yet? We got. We have a partial team. We got lots of traffic back, which you're all glad to see. So uh, I, I know you yeah. got a baseball team. They're doing we pretty got, good. Yeah, we, we, uh, we like to bend the rules a little bit there, but, uh, but we're winning, you know? <laughs> Hey, man, that's old. That's old, man. We don't talk about the White Sox. We don't talk about the Astros. That's hey, we're, old. We're winning, man. So let's talk a little bit about oil and gas. First yeah. of all, how did you guys uh, get started in the industry, and what does your company do? Well, so uh, I'm a president and uh, managing board member of Arc Energy Equipment, or Arc Energy as we call it. Uh, we design, build facilities, and uh, redeploy them around the world. Uh, I've been now, when you say facilities, what do you mean facilities? So we build like gas plants, or okay. we call them early production facilities, basically uh, from the inlet wellhead manifold all the way through the meter side so we'll design and build them kind of in the midstream space and uh, globally upstream midstream kind of men together so boy you are in a place with unlimited opportunity right now we are because of that esg movement that's happening there is yeah the horse is out of the barn. There's yeah. ESG scores online right now. People can go. Yeah, I was interested in your ESGU, man. That's cool. So ESGU, we've spoken in six states on it now. Yeah. We're going to be doing kind of a special presentation on Thursday. You're more than welcome to join the roundtable board talk. We're going to get several I'll, people. I'll actually be in uh, Pennsylvania. I would love to join, oh, though. But I'm a big ESG guy. What? We're capturing flare okay. and uh, trying to find a way to give the operator a reporting system, right? So What part of Pennsylvania? I'll be going to uh, Washington, just south of. Uh, I used to do a magazine in Washington, Washington PA, Washington. man. Nice, right man. Pittsburgh, yeah, yeah. Uh, southeast, a little we southeast. Got a, we got an office there, and uh, we do a lot up there in the middle. It's a lot of uh, dehydration, filtration. So we do a lot in the gas space, right? In the Marcellus. In the Marcellus, a lot of gas units, but basically a lot of uh, gathering facilities, midstream operations, okay. filtration. So a lot of gas up there. So the gas. number one thing that I've heard coming out of the ESG space isn't planting trees is not meatless Monday mm. it's not recycling it's a mission management correct the without number a doubt. one thing that the dollars are going to yeah. the tax rebates are going to exactly the SEC has already developed a task force as of last March wow. so the horse is out of the barn yeah. the economies are already being impacted yeah I'm telling the energy industry through the ESG you're right is that tell your story Get now grab a hold of the narrative now because otherwise they're going to tell the story for you. And right now, emotion yeah. is winning over fact. Emotion is always going to win. Fear selling, et cetera, et cetera. So at ARC, you know, and we didn't talk about this, but uh, we have been recycling since 2011 when we started. Now, when you say recycling, uh, you're not talking cans. No, nope, not cans. We're talking pure steel. You might right. recycle cans, hey, too. Hey, we'll do whatever. When we were kids, we grabbed Pittsburgh Steeler cans. That's right. We grabbed Dad's beer cans, and we recycled, and we got our 30 bucks. But, uh, you know, we always were trying to be cool, you know, and say. Cans. Yeah, that's right. But uh, we always tried to recycle and promote it, USA Made, and we just didn't get that, that impact. Well, when we realized now with this ESG stuff, we've been recycling millions of tons of steel from new steel you know and replacing that so we in the process of validating hey we might be carbon neutral we don't know this right but we're going to go through it and we're going to also figure out how to give our customer that value you know mm -hmm. I, everybody wants to put something on a wall that we're carbon neutral right whatever etc cetera, etc cetera. i want to see what can i do for the customer to help their esg scores right Crude Life has been carbon negative since day one, actually, by design. Impressive. Because I came from the print industry. Yeah. And this is no kidding. So at the, I would say 2008, my printer calls me and says, hey, you can now add this new green logo inside your table of contents yeah. because we use a soy-based ink. Ah. And I went, you mean while well, I'm cutting down trees to print 10,000 magazines? Yeah. I'm, gonna put, I'm environmental. And I said, absolutely yeah. not. Yeah. I go, I'm not going to set myself up for that. So mm -hmm. I kind of became aware of this ESG That's thing awesome, for a while ago. Yeah. And then so we consciously, because of understanding the print side of things, yeah. 
a lot of it was I just couldn't write a thirty thousand dollar check every month. As you shouldn't with yeah. ninety dollars with ninety day receivables. Yeah. Okay, just the math didn't work yeah, out in the right, timing. Right, so, yeah, yeah. but uh, what, what I'm getting at is that we purposely, because of cost of scale of economies more than anything. Yeah. We became carbon neutral from day one. That's impressive. And, and it really is. It is, it and, is. And it wasn't until 2016 I realized this because the Meridian Energy Group, I'm not sure if you're familiar with it, but they're building uh, the Davis Refinery in the Boston. Oh, yeah, I did hear about that. And they're yeah. building one in Kermit, Texas, from. too. Mm -hmm. And, yeah. of course, they're going to be the cleanest refinery on the planet. Like a 50,000 barrel refinery or, or less. 47.5. Ah, they got under the... That's how they do it, 47.5. That's five. right. That's awesome, yeah. And so they even give a little cushion. Are right? they capturing the carbon on that? Or are they, they doing... Are. That's awesome. They're That's doing awesome. a lot of different things. In yeah. fact, so since 2015, 16, the Crude yeah. Life has been doing, like, weekly... ESG updates, wow. but we didn't call it an ESG exactly, update. Exactly, yeah. It was our Meridian Energy Environmental yeah. Update. There you go. There you they go. were completely transparent. The CEO would come on. The head of engineering would come on to talk about yeah. the bends of pipes yeah. and the reduction of 30% of the emissions and things like that. And wow. It blew my mind. Because, I didn't know they were doing that And that's what all. I'm saying. Yeah. Zia Engineering out of New Mexico. Okay. There you go. There's a plug for you, Zia yeah. Engineering. <laughs> there you go. Um, just some great stuff. Dan Hedrington out of SEH would come in, and mm -hmm. he was a project manager, talk about this kite thing they did yeah. where they'd raise a kite a certain level yeah. go five miles away with binoculars and telescope to see if they could see it yeah. to mimic the smokestack awesome. things along that and so yeah. these are the transparency things i believe the oil and gas industry needs to tell more of because exactly. it connects well first of all we got to start with what is esg i can't tell you how many people come up to us and uh, ask what does esg mean right how is it scored? You know, the education in our industry, like like this organization, should be promoting that, should be doing roundtables, should be putting stuff out there, right? And so for us, right, how can we help the operator capture that score? Because now it's not about, or it is always going to be about how much oil are you producing, how much gas are you producing, what's your liquids, and hey, by the way, how much carbon are you not emitting anymore, right? That's the score that matters. All of us are doing the, the social deal, right? We're all giving back. The in oil industry, Industry, helps cancer, helps poverty, all those things. There's great people in this industry, but now we got to worry about that E, that environmental part. It should be out front and we should get ahead of this, right, Theo, and we should measure it and report it. You know? Here's what I tell people through ESG University is that, number one, the environmental, the E, the industry is ahead of anybody on that, okay? They are the leaders in the environmental movement, and I really believe that. I can see it. The oil and gas industry is the leader in the environmental movement. The energy industry has been decarbonizing for 150 years. They started with wood and hay. They went through mm. whales, for crying out loud. <laughs> they went into coal and crude oil down to natural gas, which gives us one to four molecules of carbon, which is tremendous. Mm -hmm. Sierra Club, Greta Thunberg, you jumped on a movement that was happening on its own, much like how the government did Y2K. Mm -hmm. Really, the banks weren't going to solve Y2K. <laughs> like, they didn't have a vested interest in not having their money disappear into nowhere. So yeah, yeah, there's, yeah. This, there's yeah. this kind of behavior where certain groups like to jump on a movement that's already yeah, happening. Of course. Oil and gas yeah. industry, jump on the ESG movement, take a hold of it. Yeah. I'm going to give you a couple examples. You already between bitcoining between lng cng exactly so many different ways e the way oil arc energy is recycling that's environmental exactly what you guys it already exists yep number two the social you guys have great great social causes i mean the bakken barbecue we raised eighty-seven thousand dollars. okay oil field helping hands Conoco Phillips dropping a check Sky for high. twenty grand yeah. to some volunteer fire department yeah. so they can get new electronic equipment for crying yeah. out loud. Over eighty-five percent of the uh, firefighters in today's world are volunteer. Okay, if we want to start talking about handing out uh, uh, st uh, subsidies, let's talk about exactly. firefighters first, okay, yeah. folks? But we another discussion for a different day. <laughs> yeah. Where I think the oil and gas industry is going to have issue is the G is the governance yeah okay they are so embedded with the government they actually have government affair officers of course okay yeah think about that mm -hmm. okay and i'm not trying to poke a bear here yeah. all i'm trying to say is that they are very entwined with the politicians and so they are very sensitive yeah. to things number two one number say 50 versus 70 can change someone's intellectual property with millions of dollars Okay, understanding the difference between 20, 
millimeters on a rock can be the difference of millions of dollars mm -hmm. of the shareholders. So intellectual property is a little bit of a governance issue yeah. too, okay, for transparency yeah, reasons. Right. The third is PTSD. The industry is still defending the Exxon oil spill from the 80s. It is still mm. BP spill from the early 2000s. Yeah. Once every 15 years, a major thing happens because they can't continue to stay as proactive. Guess yeah. what, farming does the same thing. Yeah. Every well, industry goes through exactly. this. Exactly, yeah. So there, there is something that's called bleep happens. And I come from ag because I come from the east side of North Dakota. Yeah. And ag was the number one dangerous industry for my whole lifetime. Of but nobody ever talked about it exactly. because we're feeding the world. That's it. We're fueling the world. We're, Why are you picking on oil and gas, people? You take, okay, you take, sorry, a, go ahead. You take a kid's cell phone away. You take a kid's iPad away. You take my uh, computer away, right? The number one thing besides for water and food that we need as humans right now is energy. You take that energy away from that kid and today's world, they're crying. And I promise you, we've been to Nigeria, we've been to Argentina, we've been to Colombia. People want power, right? And so the power need is only growing. We need geothermal, we need renewables, but let's not lie to each other. Like, it is what it is. If they got to be subsidized, let them be subsidized. But it's the reason of balance, not to get rid of oil and gas, right? There's I mean, a, there's a fine line between the uh, government controlled marketplace, okay? Yeah. I mean, California is a great example because. <laughs> yes. Oh, it's so yeah. good because when I was living it, out it there, is. they did tremendous advancements on emission management at the pump. Yep. Because you couldn't even see the Santa, I mean, you couldn't see yeah. the mountains from the Santa Monica Freeway. That's correct. That's when I was there. Mm -hmm. Well, all of a sudden, going forward, all the cars had to have this sort of engine, and all the pumps had to have some sort yep. of a plastic cover over the top. Yep. And within a couple of years, you yep. can see the mountains again. That's right. Tremendous. Yep. And then all of a sudden, they went, went a little too, too far. far. That's exactly what Because what they said was that, you know what, 1992, I believe it was, might have been 93, they said, 2% of the state is going to be EV vehicles. And by 1999, 10%. And what happened? The hybrid car market took off. Mm -hmm. People started buying hybrids. Yep. They liked the fact that they could have a gas car, but also an electric car. All right. And the state of California said, ain't good enough. Yep. We're going to force you to do more electric. That's the part where I wish the leaders would stand up yep. and say, whoa, 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 whoa. Yeah, yeah. Now we're going too far here. Yeah. Okay. Well, California is a great case. I think there's a guy on LinkedIn that, I uh, forget his name, maybe Mike, uh, somebody, Umbro, I think, does a great job to show that they bring in tankers from Ecuador that is Chinese oil that's retraded, bring it in, and literally that's burning way more than the oil they're producing in their backyard. I mean, we're dealing with a producer that's paying a dollar in MCF to get rid of gas when gas prices are six bucks. Makes no sense, right? Like it, it's are they six bucks they're now? five sixty two, I think, was this Jeepers, morning. When Jeepers. you talk about if you bought an asset, you know, anyway, we can go on for hours about California, uh, all yeah. these different things, but I'm with you on ESG. ESG is huge. We need to be promoting it. We need to be helping the uh, operators understand the emissions, how to capture them, and how to show the world that we are environmental people. I'll tell you what, if, if we can get the companies on board to do it, the crude life will create our own ESG score. Uh, we'll do it. I, I because love it. I've gone to Anything Yahoo Finance. Anything we can Finance. do to help, man, yeah. Well, Yahoo Finance, I go there, right, and during my ESG presentation, I put yep. three oil companies right up on there, yep. and the eyes get huge in the audience because, first yeah. of all, the ball's in that guy to do that. <laughs> but secondly, yeah. I didn't know that existed out there. I found 67 websites that have ESG scores when we don't even have, yeah. what is it? Yeah. Okay, what is it? It's like carbon, what is it? Oil Tell me what it is. Oil and gas industry, get yeah. out and grab the narrative because it's already happening. Yeah. And here's the part that I'm trying to tell people is the language, okay? I show XYZ oil company, right? Mm -hmm. And it shows their score and then it says severe underneath. Oh. Not needs improvement, Yeah. not puppies, not kittens, <laughs> not happy sunshine. They could have chose anything yeah, they wanted. Yeah. They chose severe. severe. Yeah. That tells me they're serious. Oh yeah, it's, it's an attack. Yeah, I, it is. I also believe the template. Ninety percent of the template that's going against oil and gas is the same template that went against smoking and coal. It's a hybrid of the two. That's I crazy. That. I, I've, I'll take a look at that. I, I will tell you. You know, I believe that there is.
with you. The banks are going to be the driver of this ESG score. They already are. Uh, money yeah. drives everything. I don't care what you, you have to have money to do a project. And like I said, oil production, gas production, your revenues, and what's your ESG score? What carbon are you? That's going to matter. Somebody has to understand what an ESG score is, and somebody has to understand what is carbon emissions, what tons are high, what's severe, what's not. If we don't get ahead of it, they will, and you'll never be able to achieve those unlofty goals. And that's the you part know? I keep telling the oil and gas industry. We've been spouting this ESG for five years now. That's awesome. And we keep hearing, oh yeah, we gotta do it. Well, come on board, let's <laughs> do it, man, because we yeah, continue yeah, to yeah, do it, you it's, know? It's, it's easy to sit back and be a backseat driver. I come know. on in the front seat, hey. It's, it's, it's a little scary at I mean, times. Well, it is, and I mean, you gotta invest all this money to understand it. Like, so what we're doing is trying to figure out not just, let me put on my, by 2030 or by 2020, I'm carbon neutral. I wanna see how can I give that to the oil company. Why? Because I'm tired of fighting to make 6% margins. I want to do something good for you and work together with you, right? And that's education, right? So there are a couple examples. And I was in Gillette, Wyoming, and I had some uh, uh, questions from the audience. One person was kind of taking me to task. Of course. And then said, <laughs> um, can you give me an examples of how this is really in real time? Yeah. I said, besides the ESG scores I just put up there, that we don't even have a set uh, criteria yeah, exactly. on the formula. I said there's example number one. Yeah. Example number two, December before the pandemic, we actually applied for a line of credit to increase from our bank and they denied us because our receivables were mm -hmm. oil and gas, mm -hmm. okay? Yep. And we're not a big company. <laughs> Meridian Energy Group, go talk to them about ESG yeah. because their whole business plan is revolved around yep. ESG. They actually, this month, are releasing their second ESG report in three years. So That's impressive. while everybody's putting out their first or talking yeah. about their first, yep. they're on their second yeah. because of banks, investors. Private equity wants it. Way. Private equity wants it. They want to know what are you going to do? You could have the best project in the world and they their last question before you leave is, okay, how are you going to give me your ESG scores? How are you going to change things? All right, so we've but, gone way hey, over time yeah. here. <laughs> Sounds I good, got man. one more question. All right, all right. For Mr. Jason Arsenault. Nailed it, man. Did I get it right? Nailed With Arc it. Energy? All right. Yeah. Uh, $100 oil. Yep. I'm hearing all kinds of people getting really excited about $100 oil. Yep. Well, I got really excited about three, four months ago when I could go to the grocery store and fill up my groceries yep. uh, cart, and it cost $100. Well, that same cart of, uh, cart of groceries costs $250 now. Yep. I'm seeing an increase of regulations coming in a whole new way from building fake schools and walls around it in California and Colorado yep. to Biden's new, oh no, these were in before. Uh, these uh, coming at the first of the year, they're gonna mm -hmm. have to bring UASs and new methane leaks and all kinds of different things to the yep. well site. We got new regulatory costs. We got natural resource increases. We got natural gas increases, which is a natural resource. We got cost of goods, COGS, cost of goods sold increases, you know, all <laughs> kinds of different things. I truly uh, yeah. believe $100 oil is a new $50 oil, maybe 60. I just like, we got to have the conversation before people go bankrupt next year. It's happening. It's yeah, happening. I mean, I and, so. and uh, you're not going to, I mean, we work in a world of supply and demand. When all the craziness goes away and subsidies and all that stuff, supply and demand rules out, right? And so we, we're at $100 oil. It's going there. Uh, and it's just because people can't ramp up fast enough. And when they ramp up, they got to deal with all the, you can't put a new pipeline in, right? And America wins because we have the most infrastructure. Right? When you cause infrastructure to slow down, we become like everybody else. Then we're waiting for the government to tell us how to do things, right? We got to be flexible. And so we will have $100 oil, we will have seven or $8 gas, and we're gonna be at the mercy of, uh, of uh, the regulations. You know? As a president of a company, uh, I don't know if you had your annual meeting yet or not, but October, November, December is popular for annual meetings. Late October. And you know, generally a lot of times, I, I've said this about the oil industry about the second year I was into it, it seems like, and this corporation's true, so it's mm -hmm. not necessarily the oil and gas industry as much as corporations, but it could be true in the oil and gas industry. They really make the bulk of their decisions in about a month time when they have their annual meetings. Correct. And, and they make their decisions, then they manage those decisions for the next 11, 10 months, right? Correct. So one to two months making decisions, 
10 to 11 months to manage them. Now there's a little bit of, you know, yeah, yeah. petty cash money, if you will. <laughs> but it's a little cushion. A lot of it's to get people to give them good prices. You're correct. And then try to carry those good prices that's into correct. the next year. Yeah. Okay, and that's that's fine design, whatever. Yep. I, I just, I, what do you want people to know either from your company or your customers, your prospects? What should people from that executive level be thinking about knowing about going into next year? So supply chain is going to be a major disruption next year. So planning, what used to take you 16 weeks is going to take you 24. What used to take you half a year is going to take you three quarters of a year. Get ahead of it right that's the main thing there will be a supply issue because of commodities because of the world supply chain that's all connected right so uh you know us at arc remanufactured and new build we do both we do we kind of fill gaps and needs it's going to be a uh, crazy couple years i believe sir i appreciate it. by the way you great got a to website? meet you man i you sure do arcenergy.com uh, arcenergy.com yeah. all one word no all hyphens. one no hyphens no commas no nets nothing. we'll make sure that we have the link at our website yeah, thanks for what you're doing i appreciate yes. it by the way and by the way thank you for the access as well because ah, one man, of the my things pleasure. that we are very grateful for is access to brilliant minds like this ah. to help us navigate because i truly believe whether you're sitting at your kitchen table or in your boardroom the oil and gas industry, because of the boom bust uncertain cycle, <laughs> they're the best industry to lead us through this Woo, right now. We definitely are up and down, man. Most yeah. people are not used to this. Well, I grew up the in pandemic a pandemic yeah, stuff like restaurants. It's too short. To it's too short of cycles, man. We need, and when you talk about a hundred dollar oil, you talk about six dollar gas. We don't want that. We don't want twelve and fifteen hundred rigs. You got any growth in business has to be sustainable at mm -hmm. a decent pace. Otherwise, you just it's, you just what goes up must come down, right? You know, folks, make sure you got some great intentions going into next year. That's right. Appreciate anything it. we can do to help you, you let us know. Thanks.